Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example is a rather challenging example. It's about a diver that dives into a pool, and by the time the diver hits the pool, the diver is moving at minus 10.1 meters per second. And the question is, what is the diver's displacement during the last 1.2 seconds? Now here, when we think about it, if, for example, the diver spends 1.2 seconds from the highest point diving down to the water, then in 1.2 seconds the diver will be moving faster than 10.1 meters per second in a negative direction since the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So in 1.2 seconds the diver would be moving faster, which indicates then that part of 1.2 seconds the diver is moving upward before turning around and coming back downward. We don't know what the initial velocities of the diver in the upward direction. We don't know how high the diver goes. A lot of things we don't know, but what we are asked is what is the displacement of the diver over the entire trip? Now, displacement is a vector quantity, therefore we can only consider this portion to be the displacement. The distance moving upward and the distance moving back to the point where the diver started cannot count as part of the displacement. Only this portion is the displacement, and that's what we're looking for. Now, if we draw a velocity versus time graph, we can really see what is happening here. Notice the diver starts in a positive velocity going upward at some initial velocity, we don't know what that is, and then the diver will finally reach the maximum height that would be at this point right here in time, called this T1, to get to the top portion, because at that point the velocity becomes negative and the diver starts coming downward. So eventually the diver will reach a speed of minus 10.1 meters per second after a total of 1.2 seconds. So how do we figure this out? Well, the first thing we need to do is figure out the initial velocity. And let's see here, knowing that g is a minus 9.8, so there's the slope right here. Let's see, how can we go about figuring that out? Ah, we can use the following equation. How about this equation right here? That the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus two times, oh, not two times, that we don't need, plus the acceleration due to gravity times time. That equation will work. Notice we know the final velocity, we know the acceleration to gravity, and we know the total time. That will help us find the initial velocity, v initial right here. So that means that v initial is equal to the final velocity minus g times t. The final velocity is a minus 10.1, Subtract from that a minus 9.8 times the total time of 1.2. So this will give us our initial velocity. So multiplying that together with 9.8 times 1.2, and then we subtract from that 10.1, and we get 1.66. So 1.66 meters per second is indeed our initial velocity of the diver. So this is equal to 1.66. Now that we have that, we can calculate the time that it will take for the diver to get to the maximum height. That will be T1, and then we can also find T2. So using the slope equation, we can say that the slope is equal to the rise over the run. And in this case, the slope will be minus 9.8. The rise will be, of course, a negative rise because it's going downwards. That would be a minus 1.66, and the run will be equal to T1, which means that T1 will be equal to minus 1.66 divided by minus 9.88. 1.66 divided by 9.88 equals, and that would be, let's see here, 1.66 divided by, uh, whoa, wait a minute, 9.88. Where did I get that from? How about 9.8? 0 0.1694 seconds. All right. Now, if we know that, then T2 will simply be equal to 1.2 seconds minus T1. And since T1 is equal to that, so we put a negative in front of that, plus 1.2 equals, that'll be 1.0306 seconds. 1.0306 seconds. And that will be equal to T2. So now we have both of the times T1 
T1 and T2. T1 is the time for the diver to reach the maximum height. T2 is the time for the diver to go from the maximum height all the way down into the pool. Now, what about the displacement? Well, notice that A2 represents the total distance from the very highest height down to here, but we need to subtract the distance the diver takes to go upward, which is the same as the diver takes to go downward to this very same point where the diver started. So really what we need to do is take A2 and subtract from that this region right here, which is equal to A1. So in other words, the displacement is equal to A2 minus A1. So the distance travels from the highest point down into the water and subtract from that the distance from there to there. So to do that, let's go ahead and say the displacement, the magnitude of the displacement is equal to A2 minus A1. And A2 can be calculated by, now notice A2 is a negative area because it's below the t-axis, so that's going to be a minus and it's a triangle, so it's one half the base, which is the time, T2, T2 is equal to 1.0306, and the height would be a minus 10.1, so that would be 10.1. The minus here would simply indicate that's a negative area. Subtract from that the positive area, but of course, since I take this area right here, that means I need to subtract from that a negative area, so negative times a negative will make that a positive. And A1 will be equal to 1 half. The base, the base would be equal to T1, which is 0 0.1694. And the height would be the 1.66. So this is equal to, that gives us a minus 5.20. Good enough. And then here, we're going to subtract from that a minus, so that will be minus 0 0.14. And so subtract this from that, that's actually a positive now. Subtract it from that, that would be equal to minus 5.06 meters. And that would be the displacement indicating that it's in a negative direction. So notice that this is a really handy way to calculate it using the velocity versus time graph. But then you may say, well, how about if I just want to use the equations of kinematic? Can't I do it that way? And the answer is certainly you can do it that way. And so let me do this one more time on the next video. But in this case, we'll simply strictly use the equation of kinematics to come up with the same answer. And we'll show you how to do it that way. But anyway, this is a really nice way to do it using the velocity versus time graph. That's how we do it.